Okay, in this game we're playing as black. So the opponent pushed forward with the e4. And we developed the knight, looking to manage the key squares as usual, and manage key squares again here. So we go for the tried and tested, and it just reminded me of the recent uh, over the board game that we did play, where this type of position was in play. It's just that th this, this knight wasn't here, this is why it looked a little bit different. This knight wasn't here, it was this knight and this bishop. Um, so that's why it looked different. Uh, but we still went for it anyway. And <coughs> this player did exactly the same thing, <laughs> you know, taking with the bishop here. Um, so we grabbed, but this opponent did actually take the knight this time. Okay, so it hasn't improved their position, but they've they've taken the knight. So currently they've got one, two, three, and we've got one, two, three minor pieces. So that works out okay. So the knight moves back. One of the key things about this type of positioning is that, I think we mentioned before, um, the opponent ends up chasing their tail in a sense because now these knights now are just getting pushed around the board. Smaller piece attacking a higher piece can't be wrong. And developing the bishop out now, attacking weak square, which is the square in front of the king or adjacent to the king. And the knight's having to move again, so it's not really developing any other pieces. Now, this wasn't a lazy man move in this particular game. This was a crucial point. And if they're potentially going castling, then this is going to cause them some trouble. So it's really targeting a higher piece, which is the knight. If it makes its way to the top, uh, if it's not taken, it can come in here and crush and open up space. As you can see, we've got the queen here. We've already got the bishop on the diagonal towards the king. And we could, in fact, fashion the knight coming here and getting the bishop into the game. So we're already targeting the king area even before they've gone into their own king area but i'm just thinking during the game i'm thinking it's going to take a while for them to go for the queen side castling so i think they are going king side castling especially as they've moved the knight again so they did castle so at this point in time i'm thinking well this could cause them the world of hurt so the smaller piece attacking the higher piece and then continuing the attack up as we said and then capturing the pawn now the king is getting a little bit airy as we mentioned all these pieces now can start coming into the fray rook comes across to defend bishop puts a check on it all looks a bit simple really doesn't it but that's the answer process but you still have to try and find those positions so now we've got a two on one like we said we've got pressure on here with the queen and the bishop and then they still come down and attack anyway but then there's a little bit of a gap here for the queen to come and sit here and then that's going to be checkmate so the knight comes to looking for protection so we can actually take the queen off the board and at this point now it's a checkmate so that was a lot of pressure put on in the early part of the game all based on what the opponent actually did we took charge of focusing again as you can see around the center of the um, board yep we managed the center with our own pieces and all the focal point was on the center but we managed with our wasn't a lazy man strike this time it was more like a proper scud missile coming up here with all our pieces facing towards the king area in the early part of the game we didn't rush it, it wasn't quick and dirty tactics as you could see it was a slow developmental process picking out the king a bit at a time that's the answer process